Happy Easter, everybody. It's truly an honor and a privilege to celebrate Easter with you and your family. My name is Brett, and from my family to yours, Happy Easter. A few of our friends and our elected officials wanted to send their warmest greetings. They want to send their love and their affection to you and your family in this time. So stick right where you are, stay tuned, and check this out. Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, my name is Cyril Turton. I'm the MLA for Spruce Grove in Stony Plain, and it is an absolute honor for me to wish everyone at Weka and the Engage Network a happy Easter. You know, as many of you know, Easter is the, the crux or the center of our Christian faith. It is a time when we celebrate that our Lord Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead. And it's, um, it's an incredible time for us to spend in fellowship, but also to remember the main tenets of our faith. And, and I realize that as we meet in this new new format where we're all you know um, worshiping and in the spirit of you know community from our respective homes because of the crisis and, and the health crisis that we're faced uh, around us i mean it's important to realize that it's still important for us to come together as a community of faith and and at this point i'd just like to read some scripture that's really been helping me at this time and it's in psalm 62 verse 7 to 8 it says my salvation and honor depend upon god he is my strong protector, he is my shelter. And trust in God at all times, my people. Tell him all your troubles, for he is our refuge. And it's important to realize that as we um, maintain this new social norm of how to stay healthy within this new context, that you know God is our refuge and we have to give thanks in all things. And so as we celebrate the Easter season this time, from my family to yours, I wish you a blessed Easter and uh, Christ is risen, he is indeed. Hi there, my name is Sarah Hamilton and I'm the City Councilor for Ward 5 here in Edmonton where West Edmonton Christian Assembly is located. It's my honor to be asked to bring greetings today as we celebrate Easter. And though we are not celebrating in the way we traditionally have and we're physically distant from each other, I know that we are making great efforts to emotionally, socially and spiritually connect with our community. So thank you for continuing to demonstrate kindness to each other, for showing empathy to vulnerable people within our communities. And I wish you all a very happy Easter. I look forward to connecting with you all soon. Thank you. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Happy Easter. Thanks for allowing me to be with you today, if only in video. Like you, I would be hoping to be uh, worshiping in my own church today, but that is obviously not the case with the crisis that's taken hold of our country right now. I know things are very dark and very bleak for both our province, but our country and the world in general. But we know that our faith in Christ, our Savior, our faith in God will carry us through. Christ gave his life on the cross for all of us and rose three days later. And it's important to remember that Christ will always be there with us and for us. And with our faith in him, we will prevail over this. Again, happy Easter to everyone. I want to end with uh, from uh, John 11:25. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall live even if he dies. He is risen. Thank you. Happy Easter. Hello, everyone. I'm Mayor Stuart Houston from the city of Spruce Grove. I wanted to start by thanking Pastor Esslinger for inviting me here today to share a message with you. And the message I wanna share with you today is hope. Because I think that's an important word that we need to consider today. During this time that we face, and these times are extremely challenging times for all of us. But I have to look and reflect on something. And you know what I've reflected on? This is the greatest grounding in my lifetime. The greatest grounding for me and maybe for many of you and the grounding is we, how much we've slowed down how we're avoiding the hustle and bustle how we're spending time at home with our families not our friends <laughs> Can't, we're not allowed to do that but slowing down getting more rest eating better guaranteed by slowing down a few years ago when I first met Pastor Esslinger, he had a book, a book he shared with me, and that book was called Hope, Not Hype. And in that book, 
for many teachings, the teachings of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And I want to share one I thought was appropriate with you today. It comes from Matthew 22, verse 39. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. During this time, it is important that we take of each other. How true. And let's look out for each other. But most importantly, let's love one another. Because loving one another and following these teachings, there's no question we'll get through this together. Because there's hope. Absolutely hope. And we are going to get through this together. Just by following these simple things as well as Alberta Health Safety Guidelines. But when you talk about hope, look how blue the sky is, have you noticed? All, how many cars are off the roads? The smokestacks have slowed down. You can see the bottom of the river in many countries in this world now. And the fish are returning up the canals. Why? Because there's no pollution. With that, there's hope. There's definitely hope. But coming out the other side of this, I think we're going to all reflect and change some of our lifestyles, and we're going to learn from a time of uh, a time of great uh, difficulty for everybody. With that, I just wanted to say uh, to wish you and your families an extremely wonderful weekend, Pastor Esslinger. Thank you very much for inviting me into your service, and everybody have a great weekend. God bless. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Welcome to Easter Online. My name is uh, Harmon, and I'm so glad that you've decided to join us on this Sunday, or maybe it's a Wednesday or a Tuesday or a Friday, whenever you're watching this throughout the Easter week. We just want to welcome you. A couple things I want to touch on before we get into our service. The first thing is we would love to connect with you. If it's your first or second time here, there's a couple ways that you can connect. The first is you can text hello to this number right here, or you can go to our description and there's an online form that you can fill out, and we would just love to plug in and connect with you, get to know who you are. Man, we love uh, being at church, doing church, and in this season, doing church online looks a little bit different. You know, and Easter at home is our very first experience with Easter online, and so we want to do it well. And so why don't you get ready, get prepared, make sure you have your Bible, your notebook, get ready to worship. We're pumped that you are here, and so enjoy this. Praise God from
arms wide open and from its bursting heart he arose breaking the surface of hell's black waters storm surge in his eyes head drenched in sighs of the released dew glistened on his skin like broken chains standing panting on the shattered grave death hanging slumped in one hand the other a flame in the dazzle of a risen world. His wounds spilled the blood of dawns, 
and his every word was a winged messenger, a blast of trumpets tearing up the skies. I have stood face to face with death. I have wrestled it through the cavernous depths. I have rewritten every word it has spoken. I have made it submit. I am the resurrection. I am the breath. Come breathe of me and live. Church, it's time to get wild in your house. Come on, let's go put our hands together. Let's sing this out. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Till I met. Yeah. I was breathing, but not alive. All my fears I've tried to hide. It was my dream till I met you. Come on, church, let's sing a song together. You call my name and I.
There exists a love far greater than we will ever understand. Love prophesied for ages. Then to disrupt the rain of darkness. One to challenge the skeptic. A love that quenches our thirst. Seeks after the sick. And mends the broken. A love that came to our rescue. Despite our betrayal and our denial. Facing death by being nailed to a cross. And while darkness appeared victorious, this love emerged from the grave.
Everyone, we want to continue in our worship right now as we take a moment to give. You know, sometimes it feels like our giving isn't going to do very much, but I remember a story in the Gospels where a young boy had a lunch with just five loaves of bread and two fish, and that actually added up to feeding 5,000 people with the remainder of 12 baskets. You see, in God's economy, what we have becomes multiplied and goes so much further than we could ever imagine. But our job is to be faithful in giving the part that we can and what God asks us to give. I wanna thank you so much for your giving and for your partnering with us in this season. We've been able to feed people, provide hampers, and minister to those who need it in this season and this time. If you'd like to give today, you can go to scatteredsaints.ca and find every way by which you can give. You can give online, through e-transfer, or even send us a check. Thank you for your faithfulness and thank you for joining us and partnering in worship as we give.
So, I mean, I've been, I've been thinking about the disciples a lot, especially as we're getting ready for, for Easter. And I think about these, these guys, three normal guys who largely uh, come from all different backgrounds and they're just really normal people, right? Going about normal everyday things. We've got a fisherman, we got a tax guy. Uh, we, we've got these guys, just this, this guys that have been passed over by, by everyone in society and they follow Jesus on, on a basic invitation. He says, come follow me. And so they drop everything. They leave their family businesses. They leave everything behind. And as they're coming up to the, to this moment where Jesus is being crucified on, on the cross, he's dying on the cross at Easter time. I, I think about how they're thinking about the last three years, the last three years. I mean, think about going to college and pursuing something and it all evaporates in a moment, in an instant, everything that you counted on, everything that you relied on, it's just gone in a moment. And I've been thinking about how in the, in the middle of everything right now, we're probably a lot more like the disciples than we would like to believe in the sense that everything is just ground to a halt. I mean, think you're one of Jesus' best friends. You've been with him for, th- for three years. Every moment, every minute, every piece of the journey, you've been there along the way. He's hanging on a cross. He's dying. He's, he's beaten. He's mutilated. He's humiliated. You're afraid for your life and you're watching your hopes and your dreams and your ambitions on on the cross die with Jesus. I think in the middle of everything right now, maybe it's a similar thing. Maybe it's like the same kind of moment where we're watching our hopes and our dreams and our plans evaporate in front of us. And it just feels like everything that we've been pursuing, everything that was worth something is just slipping away. Maybe we're more like the disciples than we'd like to think. So you've got 12 disciples, all from different backgrounds with different personalities. And you got to think about it. So you've got this uh, loud mouth kind of guy mixed in with a doubter. You have uh, basically the guy who becomes the ultimate betrayer. And and it's it's interesting, right? Because they they all process the pain of their dreams dying in a different way. One of them who says, Jesus, I'm going to be with you uh, till the end. He, three times he denies him before, before the rooster crows. You've got, you know, this guy who asked all the questions. He's, you know, he's that guy in class who always puts up his hand, always has a question. He's, he starts doubting. He starts, he's like, is anything happened in the last three years? Was it even real? Each one of them uh, process in a different way. You've got John the Beloved, the best friend of Jesus, who's, who's pledged to uh, look after Jesus's mom, Mary. Like, we're in the midst of this craziness right now. We're in the midst of, you know, COVID-19, coronavirus, and, and we're all processing that pain in a different way. And we've got a different personality and a different flavor. And we come from a different background and from a different place. And yet we're in the same place the disciples were. How are we processing our disappointment? How, it, how are we going to make it through tomorrow? How, how, <laughs> how? All right, bye.
supposed to be spring. So you've got 12 guys from different backgrounds, different places, different jobs, and each one's processing in a different way. Uh, and it's super interesting to think about um, how they handled it. So, you know, you've got Thomas asking question after question after question, questioning, you know, reality of the last three years. And then you've got Peter who's like having outbursts of anger. He's just like exploding with emotion and, and energy as Jesus is being about to be betrayed. Like he just, he just erupts. Uh, and I wonder what that means for all of us as we process through uh, this season, these moments, these changes. Uh, are, are we prone to an outburst? Are we prone to withdraw? Are we prone to run and hide? What's our default position as we're processing? Because we're each different people. We come from different places. The interesting thing, though, about the disciple is that their lives are interwoven together. They had one thing in common. Jesus. So think about this. Jesus and his disciples have an incredible meal. It's called the Last Supper. Judas slips away, and it's in those moments that he's about to go betray Jesus. They head to a garden to pray. It's late at night. And Jesus is praying literally so intensely, so intensely, that blood is coming from his pores. He's bleeding as he's praying, as the weight of... What's about to happen is on him. The disciples are stirred from their sleep. And these guards and soldiers are there. And Judas is there. And he's got the audacity. The absolute audacity. To walk up to Jesus. And kiss him on the cheek. And Peter is just incensed. With anger, he, he like he just he he just breaks out in rage. Who has the audacity to just come up to somebody, stab them in the back, betray them, knowing that their murder is coming, and just kiss them on the cheek? So Peter sees this kiss, gets up, grabs a sword, dagger, and he like literally lunges forward and grabs this, 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 this soldier's face and rips his ear off. His ear is dangling there, hanging on the ground. And in the midst of this chaos and violence and rage, Jesus is just like calm. It doesn't even make sense because he's just like, he's just calm and he's peaceful and he stops. And he reaches down into the dirt and grabs the ear that's bleeding. The soldier's crying out in pain. And he, he reaches forward with the ear and he puts it back on in a moment as he's facing murder. As he's facing the courts, as he's facing betrayal. Jesus reaches into the dirt and into the mud and picks up the bloody ear and puts it back onto the soldier's face and in the midst of his own pain there's healing that's Jesus that's Jesus I 
can't stop thinking about the moment with Peter and the knife, the ear. It's the most simplest and profound gesture that (sighs) in the midst of the darkest moment, Jesus brings healing and hope and life and despair. You know, in uh, in the book of Romans, it says that while we were utterly helpless, Jesus came at just the right time in the midst of our brokenness, our heart, in the midst of the muck, the mire, the blood, the chaos, the pain. He reaches down into our brokenness to come and meet us and to give us life. Come on, that's who Jesus is. I think we probably have more in common with the disciples than we'd like to admit. I mean, we're a mixed bag. We come from different places, different backgrounds. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, when you think about a family of faith, you've got um, like welders with accountants and lawyers and chefs, contractors, baristas sitting near tech professionals, uh, sitting by entrepreneurs. We've got bartenders and restaurateurs, and we've got drug dealers, recovering addicts, and everything in between. And we've all got this one thing in common that Jesus came at just the right time, at just the right moment. He reached down into our brokenness. He, wrote, he reached down into the, to the filth of our lives. He re- reached down into the mud and the mire. While we were utterly helpless, Jesus came at just the right time. It reminds me of that uh, U2 song, 40. Uh, it's actually based on, on Psalm chapter 40. It says this, I, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And He turned to me and He heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. And many will see what He has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Romans 5, 6 says, while we were utterly helpless, Jesus came at just the right time and he died for us sinners. It's interesting, isn't it, that in just a moment, our lives go from being business as usual to nothing is as it seems. Everything's eerily the same, but strangely different. Our hopes, our dreams, and our desires shattered in a moment our ambitions just just evaporate and we're left with a question where do we go from here when we're in the middle of things right in the thick of it right in the heat of the moment in the fight of our lives i think sometimes we we stop and we think jesus where are you It's like we've awoken out of a slumber, our eyes are open, we come up for air and we can finally see and breathe and we're like, Jesus, where are you? I want to show you something. You ready? Come on, let's go, let's go. And I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures the fame Are never enough Then you came along 
and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied hearing your love oh, oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing and nothing is better than you I know I'm not afraid To show you my weakness My failures and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley
Three days of waiting and watching, anticipation. Three days as the disciples waited, Jesus Christ hanging on a cross, crucified. He breathes his last breath. It is finished. They take his body down, wrap him, place him in a tomb. And the guards and the government are so concerned that they roll a massive stone in front of the tomb, this is not standard practice, and put the best armed guards on the job as if to think that this ragtag bunch of disciples would come and steal the body. Three long days of watching, waiting, and wondering. Death by cross was literally outlawed in the fourth century by Constantine the Great, the Roman Emperor. It was decided that it was too heinous and too inhumane a way to die. So in the midst of the grieving, the mourning, and the waiting, imagine Peter now, the swordsman Peter who cuts off ears and who has outbursts of anger, the same Peter who denied Jesus three times before the morning's light and the rooster's crow. In a moment, everything changed. A number of women went early on that third morning to visit the tomb of Jesus to mourn and to grieve. What they discovered was something entirely unexpected. As they arrived at the tomb, they found the massive stone had been rolled away and an angel was waiting for them and said, who are you looking for? He's not here. He is alive. In a moment, anything can change. In a moment, Jesus can take the hurt, the pain, the loss, the hopelessness, and he can change it in a moment. We're a lot like the disciples trying to come to terms with our present circumstance, but we can no longer hide behind our schedules our busyness. We can't hide behind our activity. No longer can we hide behind the things that keep us in this comatose-like state, moving from moment to moment, not realizing that there's something missing on the inside of us. We're shifted to self-medication between Netflix, Disney+, Plus and anything else that can fill that void, we are confronted with the depth of our humanity and the depth of the loss. It is in these moments, it is in the quiet, it is in the calm that we are confronted with our true selves. When all seems lost, we lash out or we hide out, but my friends, In a moment, everything can change. Can I tell you today that there is hope on the horizon? 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on a cross, beaten, broken, and humiliated, so that his love could be poured out on the generations, restoring and reconciling the relationship between the Creator and the created. A father and his children reconciled and reunited in one selfless act of love. Hope has a name. Hope is on the horizon. The things that seem to matter don't seem to matter as much as the world begins to come into focus as we see on that horizon a glimmer of hope. Hope has a name, hope is here, and hope is on the horizon. Because I can hold on to the hand of the one who holds the world, I do not have to be afraid. His name is Jesus and I do not have to fear. He is the same now as he was then. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave. He did it for you and he did it for me at just the right time when we were utterly helpless. The Holy Scriptures tell us that while we were still enemies, Jesus Christ made the ultimate sacrifice so we could know what real and true love is. He takes the broken pieces of our lives and like a master puzzler, he takes each piece and he places them by hand in the right spot at the right moment, at the right time, taking the brokenness of our life, an incomplete 
picture of who we are and assembling it in a beautiful masterpiece as all the colors and all the shapes fit into one at just the right moment, at just the right time. He's taking the broken pieces of our lives. He's reaching down into the dirt. He's taking the muck and the mire. He's wiping it clean. And he says, this is real life. This is real love. Hope is here. Hope has a name and hope is on the horizon. John 14, 27 says this. I'm leaving with you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus is the gift of peace, the Prince of Peace, so you don't have to be troubled, you don't have to be afraid. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the uncertainty, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that doesn't make sense, and the peace is not the absence of my problems, but the peace is the presence of Jesus. Jesus, where are you? He says, I'm right here, right here now. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your cares and your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Jesus cares for you. See, we're a lot like those disciples trapped in a cycle of watching and waiting, waiting for the next shoe to drop, waiting for the next uh, stage of the crisis to emerge. But in the midst of that place, in the midst of our watching and waiting, we can cast our cares and our anxieties onto Jesus because he cares for you. Jesus is here and he's here for you in the same way that he's here for me and he's here for your neighbor and he's here for your grandma. Jesus is here for you. You might be wondering and watching this and going, well, what does this all mean for me? This is nice for you. This is nice for nice for my aunt. She's got faith. This is nice for my sister. She's got faith. What does this mean for me? You might say, you don't know Jesus. You know about him, but you don't know him. What does this all mean for me? All you can feel right now is fear. In the midst of your fear, can I tell you, my friend, there is hope on the horizon. In some ways, we could almost say that Jesus wants to make a trade with you. It's the great exchange. He wants to come and take your fear and your doubt and your insecurity, and he wants to take it from you. If you're willing to give it to him, he wants to take it from you so he can give you a peace. He can give you true love, a calm. He can bring a fulfillment into the depths of your heart and your soul that you have not yet experienced. He wants to trade your ashes for beauty. This is what it says in the scripture in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. To console those who mourn, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He wants to exchange for your past a brighter future. He wants to help you become the person that he created you to be. But first, he wants you to know that right here, right now, he is here. He is with you in the midst of your uncertainty, in the midst of your question, in the midst of your longing. He is here. Jesus is here. Hope is here. 1 Peter 5, 7, once again says, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. Jesus cares for you. Romans 5, verse 10 says, For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. For those of us who are followers of Jesus, Easter signifies the greatest celebration in the history of mankind when Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth, laid himself down to show us real and true love. He did it while we were still his enemies at just the right time, while we were utterly helpless. He came to pour out his love for us. And so we celebrate and we rejoice. That's why I love the cross. I love to look at the cross because when I look at the cross, I'm reminded that it's empty, that he's not there anymore, 
that though he once was dead, he has now come to life. And because he has come to life, I now can have eternal life. As a follower of Jesus, we rejoice and we celebrate and we throw down and we have a party because Jesus showed us how to live. He shows us what it means to live. He shows us what it is to have hope in life. But I can cast my cares, my worries, my doubts, and my anxieties on Him. I was not created to carry those things. He says, let me carry those things. It is a beautiful exchange. He takes my past and my brokenness and He wipes the slate clean. It's just who he is because he cares for you. So don't let your heart be troubled or fray. When trials or pressures of any kind come to crush you, know that Jesus walks with you. I think about Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why don't I fear evil? because this thing is not gonna take you out. It's just the shadow or the appearance of death. I feel like a lot of us right now are walking in the shadow or in the haze or in the cloud of death. But Jesus wants to come and bring hope and life to your home today. There's hope in your house today. As long as Jesus is here and he's here right now, he wants to clear the deck. He says, I conquered death in the grave. Hope is here. Hope has a name. There is a hope on the horizon. And I don't have to be afraid because even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I'm not afraid. Why? Because Jesus is with me and he wants to be with you. The scriptures say that Jesus is a strong and a trustworthy anchor for our souls, that we can take refuge in him. Maybe you've been hiding out trying to avoid the pain, the questions, and the confusion. Can I tell you that wherever you are, Jesus wants to be right there with you. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed through suffering our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies we go through these seasons and we're afraid and we're nervous and we have so many questions but Jesus is right here right now he's with you in the questions he's with you in the pain he's not afraid of what you're asking him and he's not afraid of your past and he's not afraid of your background But he wants to put his life into your life, his breath into your breath, his heart into your heart. Don't be troubled or afraid. He's given us a gift of peace. If you're here with us today at Easter at home and you're watching, you say, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm longing for. My friends, can I tell you, there is hope on the horizon. there's hope in your house right now. We're going to take a moment to pray together. Jesus wants to do something right now in your house and in your heart. If you would say, I'm looking for peace, peace that doesn't make sense right now. I'm looking for hope. I'm going to invite you to do something bold and courageous. If you're watching at our website, There's a little box that says, I want to make a decision to follow Jesus. You just click that button. If you're on Facebook or on YouTube right now, you just write in the comments, I do. (laughs) But if you're at home, whether whether you're with your friends or you're alone, can I invite you? If you want to invite Jesus into your heart, into your life, and into your home, would you stand to your feet right now? Because we're making a move. We're getting out of our place of fear and we're stepping up and into boldness and courage and peace that's found in Jesus. Amazing 
amazing. I love it. I love it from home to home, from house to house. There is hope in your house. Jesus is with you right now. Come on, why don't we pray this prayer together all across the world in the Edmonton region. Why don't you repeat after me? Say, dear Jesus, I need you now more than ever. So I give you everything, my wins and my losses, my sins and my successes. Jesus, from this moment forward, I'm following you one step at a time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Come on, from house to house, from place to place, can we give a big round of applause for every single one of our friends who made a decision to find hope in life, to invite Jesus in this Easter season. My friends, hope is here. Hope is on the horizon. This week, as you go about your everyday life, you go grocery shopping or you fill up your car with gas, would you just remember to spread hope in life? Happy Easter, everybody. From my heart, my family, from my home to yours, there's hope on the horizon. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly
What an awesome service. If you made a decision to follow Jesus today, man, I want to say welcome to the family. Man, we are all on this journey together, and we'd love to join you on your journey. An easy way for us to do that is if you click the Jesus button on scatteredsaints.ca, or if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you go to our description. You can click uh, the link there uh, for making a first-time decision for Jesus, and we would love to connect with you. Welcome to the family. Man, thanks for joining us this Sunday. This Easter Sunday is an incredible service. What a time. We will see you back here next week. Love y'all.